Yeah, we're going to be taking you through how to create your Roy Lichtenstein inspired uh, artwork in Illustrator and Photoshop. In class, we're going to look through uh, a number of images from him, as you can see here. You can look them up on your own to find the ones that you uh, particularly like. But we are going to mimic this uh, dark black line, smooth line uh, pattern, as well as solid color uh, setup that he has done in his most famous works. So to begin, you're going to find an image or take an image of yourself. Uh, as an example here, I have chosen, and this is just to show you a few quickly of ones that have done. I'll show these again in class that students have done in the past to give you kind of an, an idea of where we're going with this. Online, I found this photo. I'm going to use this photo. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Photoshop first. I'm going to open this image in Photoshop. So right click, open with Photoshop. Once it's here, we just have to do a few steps. We're going to take the magic wand tool. We're going to select the white or whatever you have to select and whatever tool you have to use to cut it out. I'm going to just uh, add to the selection a little bit right here. Just add this little piece that got missed. I'm sorry, subtract the piece that got missed. My fault. Okay, get that. Okay, all oh, that looks good. Then we're going to select inverse. So now it's just grabbing him. I'm going to right click layer via copy. So you can see here on the layers panel. On layer one is the copy without the background. So if I hide this one, you'll notice that the background is empty. At that point, I'm going to go to image, adjustments, threshold. Actually, before I do that, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're going to blur out the pixels a little bit. That's probably good about there, maybe a little less. I'm going to blur it out too much, but just a little bit to make the edges a little bit smoother. And then image, adjustments, and threshold. Once you've gone to that, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. And then we're going to save this. Now, what do we have to save this as? We're going to go to File, Save As. Once we go there, we're going to go down to Format at the bottom, go down to PNG. And we're going to save it as a PNG file. And you can name it whatever you'd like, and you should put it in your folder. I'm going to name it Panic. Because he looks like he's in a panic. And we're going to hit Save and OK. Let that do its thing. It's going to save as a PNG file. That means that the background will be empty. Then we have to go into Adobe Illustrator. Now, once here, you can see a little more of a finished version up here. But just to start, you're going to go to File and New, Tabloid Size. Hit OK. You'll get your new image that pops up. Let's go to Essentials and Reset Essentials so everything's back up where it should be. Let's close the libraries. Let's bring out the Layers panel. Let's bring out the Swatches panel. And that's really about all you need to get started. Then from there, we're going to go to File and Place. You need to find the PNG file that you just saved to your desktop. So for me, it's this one, panic.png. We're going to hit Place. And then I'm going to click and drag. Now, from here, make sure you take the black arrow. Make sure it's clicked and selected. You're going to go over to your transparency, which is over here on the side. Select Opacity. Bring that down a bit so it looks almost gray on your screen. And then in your layers panel, you're going to lock it by hitting that little lock button. Once you've done that, you're going to add a new layer. Name this drawing one. And then I'm going to add one more new layer. Drag that to the bottom. Name that backdrop or background. And we're going to take the rectangle tool, choose a color, click and create a rectangle that's the same size as the artboard and let go. There we go. So now right now we have the backdrop which I'm going to lock also and then I have the layer one which has the image on it that we dim down a little bit with the opacity and then drawing one. So what you're going to do on drawing one now is take the pen tool, zoom in and even though these have looked like they're very pixelized on the edges we're going to be smoothing them out by using the pen tool to redraw those shapes. So we're going to go to a black as our fill color with the regular pen tool guys, regular pen tool. Then I'm going to start to draw, so watch. Even though these are bumpy, I'm going to pretend as if they're not. I'm going to click and drag, click and drag, stay right on the outside edge of them, click and drag to get the smoothest corners possible. Remember to hold option so you can change direction and continue to draw. All right, the smoother you can go, click and pull a little bit on each one, click and pull. You want to try to get option, remember option to change the angle. If this happens to you where it's hard to see, you can hit escape on your keyboard, then 
flip these so that you're seeing the black outline instead of the fill. Click and pull. I'm sorry, wait one sec. Go back to where you started, click and pull. There you go. Click and pull. Click and pull. Option. Come back. Click and pull. You can see I'm kind of curving out these things even though that they're choppy when you first look at them. Okay. And you continue to draw the entire thing until it looks good. Right. And you can go in little chunks, like I can go all the way to here, let's just say, cut back to where I started, and then I can add more to it by continuing another piece. When I'm done, I'll select them, I'll swap these in the foreground, in the um, fill and stroke, swap them so they become black like that. Any areas I know I'm going to want to color, I got to make sure I take the direct selection tool, click on the edge, pull them, and make sure that they connect. So for example, here I know that inside the eye is going to be some kind of white maybe, and that this will be some kind of highlight. So I might want to even close this up and then just reset the edges here. All right, so things connect. Be sure to try to connect as much as you can on this. If you want to check your work, hide layer one, and you can see how smooth things are starting to look. So if I fast forward a little bit, when you're done, you're going to have black lines that look very much like what you see here. So, once you finish it up, you should be able to take the black arrow, select the whole piece, go to Object, Live Paint, and Make. Once you've done that, you can use your Live Paint bucket choose your colors and fill things in with whatever color you'd like just like that then the other pieces that are brought in here as you can see in this example are ones that were found online so you can go online look other things up so for example we looked up this we looked up burst or we looked up uh, buildings or building silhouettes right so we looked up building silhouettes we went to images we found some building silhouettes, you know, maybe these, maybe these, maybe this, whichever one that you prefer. Then you can click on it, view the image. Once you view it, you can literally drag and drop in. If it doesn't let you automatically, try it a second time until you get the OK on it. It should drop it in for you. And once it does drop it in, you can zoom out. And here's the trick. Take the black arrow, move it out of your way a little bit, click on it. Go up to the top, select Image Trace. Once you say OK to Image Trace, it's going to trace it very simply, and then you're going to expand it. Now, once you expand it, you can take the Group Selection tool, click on any piece, and move in other individuals. See? You can get rid of the white piece, take the black piece, bring it back over here, black arrow, resize it by holding Shift and pulling from the corner. And I'm going to zoom in, Command-0. See a little skyline going on in the background. And imagine you had the guy's face on here. I'm going to flip back to the other one and just grab the old guy from this one. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right. So I had gone. I'm going to get rid of this other one. So I had gone on already, finished the drawing, made it into a live paint group so that I could take that live paint bucket and color things in. Uh, there are also bursts, like I said, that we had had before. this sort of thing, where you could drag that in also. I did the exact same step, drag that in, click on it with the black arrow, click on Image Trace, hit OK. Once I've done Image Trace, hit Expand, zoom out a little, take the Group Selection tool, click on the white edge, get rid of it, get rid of it, there we go. And now you have this piece which you could use, make smaller, send to the back, bring to the front, rotate, whatever you'd like to do. And then this piece that goes in here, right, I would make two of these. So I would hold Option and make a second one. And here's the reason I would make the second one. If we look back at Roy's work, you notice that some areas are in solid color and some have this dot pattern. And many times the dot pattern has different colors on it. Either it's empty behind it with red dots, or in this case you got blue dots, some of them are, dot, are black dots on top of a color. 
Let me go into another example. So if we wanted to do something like this, what we would do is go over, make one of these with the live paint bucket, choose the color that you want with the live paint bucket, fill these in with a color, whatever that color is going to be, right? Maybe fill this piece in too. So you got one that will have solid color on it. See that? Then you can have another one here where you use the live paint bucket, but this time in your swatches, click, choose open swatch libraries, go down to patterns. You can do basic patterns, dots, lines, textures, go to dots, choose a dot pattern and fill and fill, right? So even let's just say those couple of spots. Then I would take this, click on it, make sure you arrange it to the front, pull it right on top. Got to make sure it lines up exactly on it, right? And you'll see that pattern kind of lays over the top of your piece. <clears throat> then we'll take the whole thing, drag it, and drop it over. And if need be, we could always take the, um, the city in the background, you know, send that here, let's say, so you can kind of see the background behind them, move that down. Sorry. That sort of thing. All right, and we can continue to play from there, color it differently from there. Any color options that you need help with, that you're not sure about, come and see me, and we will finish this up together. And you should have some statement at the top inside the bubble.